Welcome to Cocktails and Combo. I am Sharina, aka XOXO Sharina on Instagram and Twitter. Today is Wednesday, so that means I'll be pairing up with the co host. We'll be sitting back, sipping wine, and discussing the topic of the week. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button and sit back and enjoy today's episode. Hey, I want to take a quick moment to ask, are you enjoying this podcast? If you are, please do me a favor and leave a review so that others will know how much you enjoy this podcast. Share with a friend or two and also head over to cocktailsandcombopodcast.com. Now on with the show. Hey girl, hey. Today is Wednesday. I am Sharina, so you know it's time to start Cocktails and Combo. However, today I have no one here sitting with me. I'm riding solo dolo, so it's just you and me. And we'll go ahead and start the podcast right after this break. Hey friend, let's talk about goals. Weight loss goals, glow up goals, hair goals. And for those that want to make a little extra money, let's talk about side hustle goals. As a health and lifestyle ambassador, I paired up with It Works to offer you slimming gummies, which attacks your pinchable fat. That means stomach fat and back fat Betty. Sis, gone. All from taking gummies. No caffeine, no stimulants added. Now who knew that glowing up started from the inside? Just celery and super greens can definitely help you with that. We also offer skin products for those that like face masks or beauty products. If you're interested, we have that as well. Now for my queens that are looking to lose some weight this year, we offer the Slimming Gummies. And then we also offer Skinny Brew Coffee, which is definitely one of my faves. However, if you're not a real coffee drinker and you don't want something that strong, no problem. We have Keto Coffee that will work best for you. Now let's not talk about that Thermal Fight X. With these products, you can definitely lose up to 30 pounds in 90 days. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? 30 pounds in 90 days. Talk about hitting goals this year. If you're interested in getting a jump start on your body goals, head over to xoxosharina.com and click It Works in the menu and become a loyal customer today. Now, please read the loyal customer description thoroughly before submitting that order. Now, for those that have side hustle goals, let's accomplish that in the next break. Now on with the show. As you know or may not know, this podcast is appropriately named Cocktails and Combo. Since I am sitting here solo dolo, I decided to just have a little sip of something, nothing um, too difficult, I guess, making wise. I just have some Jack Daniels apple and I just added some um, cranberry to it. I just recently got into Jack Daniels apple. This is my second time purchasing it and honestly I kind of want to say that I like Jack Daniels apple a little bit more than Crown Royal apple. So I think that I'm going to stick with the Jack over the Crown. Reasoning being is because Jack is a little stronger and it has a nice apple flavor but it has um, it's a little stronger than the crown. Crown can kind of, after drinking it for so long, it, it, I start drinking it like juice, like, let's be honest. And that's not safe. So with the Jack, I can tell that it's a little stronger. So I sip that responsibly. <laughs> now that's what I'm sipping on today. I hope that this is enough intro time for you to get your drink, to sit down, to get comfortable so that we can jump right into today's conversation right after this quick break. Hey sis, you. Yes, you. The one that said she would get out of her comfort zone in 2021 or the one that said she was going to launch her own business. Or are you the one that said in 2020 you would no longer live paycheck to paycheck? Or maybe you're the one that's been watching us from the sidelines wondering if you should give this brand ambassador lifestyle a go. Well, you'll never know unless you shoot your shot. And guess what? It's only $39 to enroll today. $39. If you're ready to join or if you want more information, text me directly at 248-677-1515. Once again, text me directly. The word join the 248-677-1595. Talk to you later. So today's topic is a topic where I kind of had to sit back and have this conversation with myself first before even deciding to make it a podcast episode. Now, 
when I say what this topic is and what we're talking about, please do not stop the podcast. Please don't hang up on me, sis. I'm thinking about just making that the series because it seems like each episode might get a little bit more difficult to either listen to or maybe for me to speak about. I don't know. But this one right here, I really had to talk to myself about it first and then get my thoughts together, process everything. And now here we are recording. So today's topic is your nine to five versus your passion with a subtitle of don't quit your nine to five until. Now I know you don't want to hear that when you are ready to quit, you ready to put your two weeks in, you ready to be this entrepreneur, you're so excited to just jump out there, jump out on faith and just start doing the work right now. You don't really want somebody to say, wait, 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 don't quit your nine to five yet. I know, I understand, I get it. I probably wouldn't want to hear that either. But then I thought about it as I was working my nine to five and realized there are some benefits here. Now, before I would probably say like the benefits are, of course, like the benefits, the health insurance, um, medical, dental, vision, those things that you don't necessarily want to pay for as an entrepreneur right away, because as soon as that that employer is no longer paying for those uh, medical benefits, you learn that they are way more expensive than you thought. So that's typically something I would honestly just go ahead and be like, wait, before you do that, think about this. Or at least that's what I was telling myself for a while. And then I just realized, wait, I mean, that's important. It is. But there's some other things we need to talk about first. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into this conversation. So the first note I have is don't quit your nine to five until you take the time to analyze your skills. Now, why do I say that? I say that because some people are in jobs that are actually teaching them the skills that they need to progress as um, an entrepreneur, progressing your own business, progress as your own boss, right? So before we jump out of that job, let's first look at the skills that this job is teaching us so that we can hone in on those skills and build those skills up as best as possible before you just chuck the deuces. So over the years, I've done different things. I worked in retail, which taught me a lot about customer service. I was in retail for at least 10 years, and I learned a lot about customer service how retail stores, um, how they go about customer service. I learned some things about marketing and how they market to their target markets or their target audience. These are things that I learned by being in the job, clocking in every day, paying attention, um, listening when you're going through these trainings or these up trainings. These are the things I paid attention to while I was um, in that particular industry. Then eventually I switched over into health insurance and being in health insurance has taught me some uh, different things. The first job I had before the one I have now, um, that one actually taught me a lot about myself. It taught me a lot about my leadership skills. I was put in a position as a supervisor. So of course it taught me that Being a glorified babysitter is just not for me, but I'm really, really good in that position because I have really great leadership skills. I'm good with managing a team. I'm also really awesome when it comes to teaching and training and making sure my team has all the information and the resources they need. I'm really hands-on and pay great attention to detail. So if I never took that position, I would have never known these things about myself. Like I said, it taught me that I don't necessarily care to be a supervisor, but I myself know what skills I have and what I can bring to the table in the event that, you know, maybe I took that position again. Probably not. But it taught me what, what I bring to the table. I know my assets now. I know my assets from working in retail. I know my assets from being a supervisor. And then the position I have now 
has taught me a lot about um, time management. So if you're struggling with time management still, go back to the previous episode, Everybody vs. Time Management. I gave a lot of good tips and tricks to help you out when it comes to learning how to manage your time. This position I am in right now has taught me a lot about follow-up. Following up uh, with what I do is different than how you would do it as an entrepreneur, but at the end of the day, you still want those skills. The number one thing you want is the confidence to even be able to follow up in the first place. If you are nervous about sending an email, if you're nervous about sending a message, if um, you're a little scared to say, hey, last week we were speaking about X, Y, and Z, you said that you would have a resolution by today, just checking in to see where we're at with resolving this problem. If that is a problem for you right now, in a job, that's really going to be a problem for you as a CEO of a company. The position I have right now um, has tapped in to my leadership skills again. Um, and then recently, I, I didn't necessarily, I guess, know I had an issue with, um, I guess, money, but not just money, but large amounts of money. So at first, when I first got in this position, I literally told one of my coworkers, like, no, I don't want to do certain things with these accounts because you're touching a lot of money. I don't want to mess somebody's account up because the accounts that I work on are connected to a real life person, right? But then what happened is they were like, okay, well, like, this is what you do. So we're just, <laughs> we're just going to teach you how to do it. So you feel comfortable doing it. And that's what they did. Now today, I literally, um, like literally today, I, let me see, I think I adjusted about $105,000 in total. I feel like it was a little bit more than that, but $105,000. Now, before when I first started this job, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to touch nothing that high because it's, it's large amounts of money. It's somebody else's money. Like, oh my gosh, whoever knew that? I had this issue. I didn't even know that I had it until I started working this job. And I guess a lot of people wouldn't until you're put into the position. Now today, I deal with $100,000, $200,000, $400,000, and it's nothing. Like I work on these accounts, I move things around, and I just go about my business and I don't think nothing of it. That has really helped me to look at money like a number take the emotion off of it and literally look at it like it's a number. Now I know you're like, well, that's their money. (laughs) That's how I think a lot of times too. That's the hospital money. That's not my money. But sometimes it helps because when you look at your bank account, there's no emotion. When you disconnect that emotion from the money, it helps you to say, okay, this is where I am. This is the number. Not even look at it like it's money. This is the number I'm at. This is where I need to be. Now, what needs to be done so I can get from here to here? And you literally just look at it like it's a number. The position I'm in now has really helped for me to disconnect, um, I guess, all the emotion that comes with it. And I I can't say that that, that's an everyday thing for me because when you look in your own bank account, you know it's your bank account. But for the most time, sometimes... For the most part, I now know how to tap in and disconnect the emotion when it comes to money because I literally do this every day. Every day that I clock in, that's my job. So I say all this to say that before you just say, oh my gosh, I'm so tired of this job. Sometimes the reason why you are put in a position is to help you with whatever you're going to do going forward. So for example, say you want a boutique and you know, you're getting some orders and you're all excited and now you're ready to quit your job just fully out of excitement, but you don't have your customer service skills in check. So if you're working in a position that's teaching you customer service, regardless if it's at a call center or in a retail store and you're trying to run your own business, why would you jump out of your position right now to go straight into being the full-time boss and you haven't even conquer the challenge of customer service customer service is there's a lot to it 
it's not for everybody. You do have to be a peace people person. You do have to be a people person. But in order for you to run a business and have like a boutique or a store, you need that customer service piece. And if you don't have it in your job right now or you're just rushing yourself out of your job, not paying attention to the fact that it's actually teaching you and helping you do what it is that you want to do every day, then that can easily lead to you having problems in the future in your own business. So before we take that leap, sit back, take some time, analyze the skills you have, analyze the skills you need to build, and let's start working on the areas and what we need to work on before we just chuck the deuces respectfully with a two weeks notice. (laughs) Number two, the second thing you need to do before you just quit this nine to five is you need to know your number first. So what do I mean by know your number? You need to know how much you need to have saved up before you just leave a job. So the rule of thumb is always to save up at least six months worth of expenses before you leave a job. So if I mix in Dave Ramsey's emergency fund of a thousand dollars so you need one savings account that has a thousand dollars in it you need that first then your second savings account because you can have multiple which we talked about in the b word you can have multiple accounts so in your second savings account you want to have the amount of your expenses now when i say expenses I looked at it more than how people typically say. People will say that you want like your rent or your mortgage, your car note, you know, your utility bills, um, daycare. I would say hair and nails because if you're the type of person where you're not going to stop getting your hair and your nails done within a six month, that needs to be in the budget also. So every little thing that you do. So Pay attention to your bank account, what you're paying for and what you're swiping for. Make sure you have six months worth that. I would even include like the subscription services. Um, And I know people would be like, why would you include that? Because if that's what you're used to and you're trying to keep your same lifestyle, then you have that in the bank also. But if you need to cut it off, you have that extra money. Um, which it might not be, it might just be an extra $15 a month. Um, and I think that's what Netflix is. I really don't know. I don't pay for it, but I know, I know title is like, um, 15 Peloton is like 15. So things like that, your gym membership, or, you know, you might want to switch that, cancel the gym And get the Peloton app. Whatever whatever you decide to do. But make sure you have everything put in your six month um, savings. So that when you leave this job. You have savings sitting there. And you can still pay your bills. And you're not stressing out. My third tip is to make a big goal for your business. And do not leave until you are consistently hitting that big goal once a month. So... Mentally, this will help you out because if, say you have this goal right now, like, I'm just going to start a side hustle. And I'm out here side hustling and I'm making an extra $1,500 a month. Because really my goal is to make like an extra $500 to 1000 a month just so I have extra money to help me with, you know, anything. Paying off a of debt. Or just livelihood, just spending money, just fun money. Whatever the case may be, you have extra money in your bank. And it's all coming from your side hustle. That's great when you just side hustling. But when this is your full time, that $1,000 might not be enough if your living expenses is, um, I don't know, 2000 a month. So now you're 1000 short because you don't have that full-time job to cover the difference so let's make a big goal something that something that will cover like your monthly expenses and also your business expenses 
And then you can even add your business savings because a lot of people don't talk about business savings. You want to have um, extra money for your business as well. So money is coming in and you're going to use some of the, that money has to go back into the business. It doesn't just go straight into your bank account. It has to go to the business first. So your business expenses, whatever it costs to, you know, keep your platforms running, um, any type of supplies that you might need once a month, like all that, you need a number for that. And then you need a number for whatever you need to put that together. And then I was still kind of amplified a little bit to make it a big goal. Because the point is for it to be a big goal. Once you are consistently hitting this big goal, that'll help you have the confidence for you to leave your job. Because honestly, if you are making that big goal while you're working a full-time job, once you leave your full-time job and you no longer are giving your eight hours a day to someone else, I'm sure that big goal can be hit and then you can even create a bigger goal, which I would call a push goal. And you can really push and, and hit that bigger goal as well because, I mean, you got time. Eight hours out of your day, every day, has now been opened. So you got more time to make more money. And then my last tip, I, the fourth, t- and then my last tip, my fourth tip is do not leave until you have all your business essentials. So the point of your nine to five is to help, um, of course, pay your bills and take care of you, take care of your kids. And then you should have whatever extra money or whatever you can pull out of that nine to five that you're working, you use that money for your business. If you need shipping supplies, if you need supplies for your items, if you need merchandise, if you need business card flyers, box, like whatever it is you need, you might need the shipping bags, um, all those little business essentials, they add up and they add up quickly. So before you leave this nine to five, use that money, those checks that you're getting to build up your business before you leave. Even like the shipping printers, like all the, all that stuff adds up. Um, not even talk about the merchandise. If you actually have to purchase, purchase merchandise, I make a lot of my items. So I have to go and find, um, a lot of my items are glass. So I find champagne glasses, wine glasses, vases. Like I have to purchase all of that. And then I have to purchase the items to use to decorate whatever I'm buying. So I use my nine to five money to supply my Sharina's House of Serenity store and buy the supplies needed to decorate. If you have a boutique, that merchandise adds up. Like it, it's easy to run up a bill just to fill up your boutique store. Super easy to be, to be honest. So use that money. When I used to have an accessory store, I would take a check And within like that check, I would take a certain amount of money out. And then that was the amount that I would buy merchandise with. And then I would do it again on the next check and I would take a certain amount out. And then I would um, build up another order and I would buy more accessories with that second check. So if that's how you have to do it, that's how you have to do it. Nowadays, people want to start with, you know, the really nice website. You want to start with all the packaging with the cute bags with the flyers with the business cards with the thank you notes with the whatever else like if if that's what you're interested in the only thing I would say is budget um, and look at different websites but all that stuff adds up all that stuff is money like I know you see people on Instagram have all this just packaging stuff and it's really cute and it's branded but it is okay to work up to that if that's not where you are. However, if that's just where you want to be and that's where you want to start, that's absolutely fine. But use those 9 to 5 checks to buy those items, to buy those things that you need before you leave the job. I wouldn't I wouldn't leave the job and then go get all that stuff. I would start doing it while I'm in the 9 to 5 
So then once you leave the nine to five, you already have all the things you need for your business to just generate and run and just go. So I know you have a passion. I know if you're like me, you just you just want to go. Let's be honest. You want to go. I even have a date. I have a date of when exactly I want to put my two weeks notice in. Because at the end of the day, when you have a passion, that's all you want to do. That's what you want to wake up doing. That's what you want to go to sleep doing. But there are steps and there's ways to go about it. A lot of people talk about the glitz and glamour of the business. A lot of people don't really talk about what goes on behind the scenes. Um, Some things that people battle with once they lose their job is now they have all this free time. And you get comfortable with that free time because you don't have a supervisor checking in on you. There's nobody micromanaging you. You are the end and beginning of that business. So you're the CEO, you're the manager, you're the supervisor, you're the head of sales department, you're the janitor, you're the shipping and handling uh depart like you're you're everything. <laughs> you are everything when it comes to your business. If somebody happens to send a message, an email or a IG to ask a question like you are customer service. You got to answer that. No, there's no one over you to say, hey, how many emails did you answer today? How many orders did you get out today? How many posts did you put up on Instagram? Like there's no one to micromanage you. You have to micromanage yourself. So these tips should help you to leave gracefully, but to Make sure you have everything in check so you're not leaving and stressing out. And I mean, I kind of touched on this already, but once you leave the job, like, sis, please leave respectfully. Give these folks a two weeks notice. I don't care if you're working at home or not. Give them a two weeks notice so that you can leave respectfully. We're not just about to say, hey, I quit. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I make my own money. I'm good. Like, no. Put that two weeks notice in. Leave that job respectfully. Now, I know this is not your favorite topic, but that's okay. These are just a few things that you might need to hear before you go ahead and leave that 9 to 5. Get as much as you can out of that 9 to 5 before you head into entrepreneurship. That is all for me. But, hey, before we leave my co-host Mashia from the episode I'm Christian but Ratchet answered the five questions the five questions that I've been asking all my co-hosts she answered those listen to how she answered her five so what's one thing you would thank your younger self for doing my younger self I would think never giving up Mm. what does settling look like for you not an option what is one thing you do to better yourself daily pray how do you protect your peace isolation what is one of the most recent lessons you've learned stop being negotiable with the things that matter the most to you Mm. oh i love how they answer these questions that wraps up today's episode thank you as always for listening and we can always continue the conversation over at xoxostrina.com go ahead and check out the blog if you'd like to add on to the conversation leave any comments for me there and until the following wednesday bye